Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, I think we're about ready to get started. My name is Darren Henry. I'm the Director of Marketing with Onshape. And this is a, a really nice webinar. This webinar is to give you a, a full understanding of the changes that are occurring in the CAD industry and especially looking at the benefits of full cloud CAD. Uh, we have a nice crowd joining us, so I want to thank everybody for making the time in their schedule uh, to attend this webinar. Along the way, as I go through this webinar, and we're going to dive and spend a lot of time in the software, I want to open it up for questions. So if you look in the GoToWebinar interface, you'll see that you can ask questions within the question section. And what I'll try to do is, uh, along the way, as I see questions pop up, I'll try to answer those real time. So please, if you have any question at all, uh, don't hesitate to type them into the interface. Okay, so let's get started. You know, there's been may maybe three major uh, revolutions or, 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 uh, within the, the CAD industry, big, uh, three big transitions. In the, in the early 80s, we saw people leaving the drafting board and moving to 2D drafting uh, packages such as AutoCAD. And, you know, really what happened was there was an innovation of the, of the PC. So a nice platform shift into, into the desktop computer. And the business model at that point was established at about $5,000 uh, per, per draftsman, per person. In the late 80s, you know, a new paradigm shift occurred where we were looking at uh, parametric 3D modeling. And the problem was the platform that could support that was Unix-based, and it was extremely expensive. A lot of larger organizations adopted it, but the mainstream uh, manufacturer could not. And if you looked at the price point at that point, it was about $20,000 uh, per license of software. And, and these price points that you see on the right are basically based off license costs. That's the upfront cost to really get involved with these software programs. In the late 90s, you know, mainstream solid modeling came into effect, and, and it was probably led mostly by SolidWorks, a company that's near and dear to many of our hearts here at Onshape. And um, you can see there was a platform shift as well as a price point change. The platform shift was to the PC. It was Pentium-based. It was running on Windows NT at the time. And again, the price dropped significantly. Well, we feel we're now ready to have a fourth shift. And that's to the world of cloud computing. And we feel that there's a tremendous amount of benefits in doing that, much like 3D parametrics brought to the market in the late 90s. We also feel that it, it is a price point shift as well. So it opens up the, um, the affordability of 3D and uh, you can do more with it. If you're not familiar uh, with traditional CAD, I, I think most people on this call are and you can sort of uh, sympathize with uh, with some of the CAD pains that I'll, I'll be highlighting. But with traditional CAD, you you install the CAD system on every engineer's desktop, and there's a lot of friction involved. In in this case, every engineer or designer would have to pay about five thousand dollars US to uh, to get a license of the software. There's extremely large downloads, installs, updates, and service packs. Every time you want to update uh, in the year, you're, you're wasting half a day just downloading and installing and setting up your computer correctly. If you have a large organization, you know, you may be dealing with uh, juggling license codes and having license servers set up, and there's IT overhead associated with that. Crashing is a big issue. Everybody in 3D CAD agrees that crashing is a big issue. In fact, some of the surveys that we've done have seen people crashing every two days. And it's unacceptable. They lose work. They have to start things over. Uh, it, it's just, it, it, it's not only frustrating, but it actually is costly. And, you know, what, what happens is as CAD systems evolve, different people actually upgrade at different rates. So then you start getting file incompatibility issue. If this person's on the latest SOLIDWORKS 2016, this person's on a 2013 or maybe a Creo 3 versus a Creo 2, you start having file incompatibility issues where you can't open up the future version files. I think everybody would agree that that is the headaches associated with traditional CAD. Well, when you actually add the data, you know, you even get more headaches. And these are common things that I think you would also agree with. You know, trying to um, share data between 
individuals. You would use different things like email, FTP, thumb drives, but maybe you put in a file server or you went ahead and spent and invested in a PDM. What that actually does is create a lot of copies of data and you still have a lot of questions regarding, do I have the latest version? Are people checking in and out the correct version into the vault? Um, where is the latest version? And are you overwriting someone's work? With the PDM systems, you know, you have the problem of one person has it checked out so other people can't edit it and it becomes a, a management issue. Um, but there's a lot of friction there. There's a lot of hassles, a lot of friction. Now, there are cloud drives and people are starting to use that, especially when sharing. But that actually just creates even more copies. And as we're trying to get into the mobile workforce with engineering and design, you know, right now the only option is viewing. And that even uh, in many cases creates another copy of data. So all these copies, it's really an archaic system and we think there's a better way. The better way we feel is something like Onshape, which is the only full cloud system right now for professional design. But in, in, with Onshape in a full cloud CAD system, you actually have the CAD application and the CAD data accessible in the cloud. There's no install on your system. And that means that everyone is always on the latest version of the CAD system. And there's no copies of data required. So everyone is accessing the same copy of the data. And what it really means is teams are able to work faster. They need, they can innovate quicker, there's less headaches, and obviously it's much more affordable because with a cloud-based system like Onshape, you're not paying the upfront license fee of $5,000. You pay a monthly or annual subscription fee, and our pricing is for our professional uh, subscription is $100 per month, and that's $100 US, and, and it's the US equivalent no matter where you live. Um, we also have a free version, so you can get to know Onshape. You can work on public um, uh, models, models you want to share with the public. If you're a hobbyist, you can, you can utilize it to, um, to learn the application. And on top of that, we, we do allocate some disk space for, or for you, some storage, data storage for you to, um, to do private projects as well. But the key between the two is not the CAD functionality. It's the amount of CAD storage you get. So with the free, there are limits on CAD storage. And with the uh, professional, there, it's unlimited. You, you can store as much data as you'd like. And we can talk more about that as we uh, move into the demo. A little bit about the company. Oh, by the way, the advantage is unmatched accessibility. You know, what you're going to see today will run on any CAD, uh, any computer. You can run on a Macintosh, a PC, a Linux computer, a Chromebook. It will run on a phone as well as a tablet. Greater sharing and collaboration. You know, it's easy to collaborate. You don't have to create copies when you're sharing and collaborating. The affordability we've talked about. Greater stability and performance. And you're going to see the way you can do faster product evolution. Uh, you can you can iterate on different um, different variations of your project and, and come up with the best solution. And then, of course, we're a modern company, so we're using a modern infrastructure. We update every three weeks with functionality. You don't wait a year. And as you report problems, we actually tell you what's, what's going on with those. We, we give you a ticket number that you can track. So you're always in the loop with the enhancements and how the enhancements will affect you. Um, you may be familiar with the team of Onshape, but let me, let me sort of highlight uh, where Onshape came from. This person right here is John Hurstick. He is the founder of SolidWorks, and he's also the founder of Onshape. In fact, most of the Onshape management team is the original team that started SolidWorks. So you have John McElhaney, the CEO, a former CEO of SolidWorks. He's our CEO. Dave Corcoran is uh, our VP of R&D. He was the VP of R&D for SolidWorks. Uh, Scott Harris led the team that created the UI for SolidWorks initially, and he is leading the team for us. So uh, even myself, I worked at, at SolidWorks for 15 years. A lot of CAD experts, but we've also combined um, our, our, our brain power with people who are experts at cloud computing and security. We have uh, John Russo, who came from Verizon and CloudSwitch. Dan Shore, our CFO, actually came from Harvard University. 
and Robbie Reddy is our um, systems lead, and he has a lot of um, uh, cloud security experience. So a really nice team put together, people who understand CAD very well, as well as understand cloud computing. And the team has actually caught the eye of a lot of investors. We've raised $169 million in venture capital. So the company has a long, uh, a, a d- deep financial backing for to do some aggressive R&D. And we have you know, a nice long runway to, to meet our goals. Right now, we're at about 100 employees, and we're based in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, the product that you see today, you know, we introduced beta about a year ago, the beta pr- program, and then we removed the beta label. So the commercial product has been available since the second week of last December, so a little over four months. And I, I think you'll um, agree when you see it how remarkable it is. It's extremely powerful for being this young of a product. Okay, let's dive right in and take a look at some of the things that I'm talking about. And, and again, if you have any questions at all, type them into the interface. So one thing I'd like to do is start by talking about what I'm running on. I'm running on a MacBook, and you can see I have a Chrome window open, my browser window. Here's Google. This is today's Google Doodle. And what I'd like to do is just go to the URL that's for Onshape. It's cad.onshape.com slash sign in. And you can see, actually, I'm going to log out so you can see this. The first time you come to log in, you'll be prompted to enter your email as well as your password. The password's only known to you. A lot of people are concerned. If I put my data in cloud in the cloud, who has access to it? And it's only you. You know, only you can access your account. And right now, it's password protected, but you could also turn on two-factor authentication. So we'll sign in. So right within the browser, the same browser you check your Gmail, the same browser you might check your calendar and, and, and surf the web, you have a CAD system. And you can see that we're not a file-based system. We're actually, I'm actually showing you different projects, and I'm going to open a couple of them here. We'll open this clamp, and we'll open this, uh, this bevel gear. But you can see these different, um, different projects are available, and this is all my uh, different projects that I've made. Um, by opening them up, I can open them up in different tabs. And what's really nice is, so I'm going to open up this bevel gear casting fixture first. I'm based on the east coast of the United States, and this data is actually being streamed to me from the west coast of the United States. And what you'll notice is it's actually, um, and I'm in my home office right now, but you'll see that, you know, you have full 3D parametric models right within your browser that you can pan, zoom, and rotate, you know, in real time. All the computation of this model is actually done off-site. It's not done in my computer. My computer is just using its capabilities to paint the screen with the image that you see. When you look at a, um, a project in Onshape, it's not file-based. So the same document that contains the assembly could contain other parts. So this is what we call a part studio where we develop uh, different parts. And you can see the feature tree on the left. Onshape's a little different in that we let you build parts together. They can share features and share sketches. So this casting was built together, split. It shares a lot of the same features. If I change the fillet on one part, it changes it on both. There's other assemblies in this document as well in this project. This is a hoist ring that was actually bought out. And you can see that we have full assembly motion right within Onshape, even with no software installed. There's also some other data files that you can upload. This is a PDF file. So any, any data file that you have, whether it be uh, CAD data from another CAD system or a PDF uh, image, um, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, you can upload those into your Onshape project as well. Store all your engineering data together. It's a platform for you to work with. And, you know, when you share that project, it shares all that data. When you, when you use version control, it uses all that data as well. It version controls that data as well. So it's really nice. What I'd like to do is, um, I, we're going to come back to this casting, but what I'd like to do is um, move over to a hydraulic clamp project that I'm working on as well. So this is a hydraulic work holding clamp, a small, simple assembly. We're going to actually show you how we build this part and build this assembly 
in this demonstration. So, so you get a feel of, of how um, Onshape works. By the way, this is an assembly. It's a working assembly. You can move up and down and rotate. Um, you can see we have the different part studios where we built the parts. Here we built three parts together. That O-ring shares the groove, you know, of the cylinder. We built those together. We have uh, the swing arm itself. And Onshape also can create drawings, so we could lay out a detailed drawing as well. And, and this is a drawing of the swing arm. Okay. So let's go ahead and create an, uh, something that looks very similar to this, just so you get a feel of how Onshape works. The first thing we'll do is within this project, we're going to create a new tab, and it's a Part Studio tab. You do that by hitting the little plus on the left. This Part Studio is where we create and edit geometry. And if you're used to 3D CAD already, you'll notice you get three datum planes. And you simply pick a plane and, and hit sketch. You can look normal to that plane. And you can hide those planes if you want. And now you can just start sketching out geometry. And I'm going to sketch out a couple circles. I hope GoToMeeting is, is, or GoToWebinar is keeping up with me. But you'll notice, hopefully, that we're picking up alignments. We're picking up sketch constraints. Um, just like you would in an installed CAD system. I'm going to go ahead and draw a line, and hopefully you can see that I'm picking up a coincident on the top circle, and I'm picking up a coincident and tangent on the bottom circle. I'll do the same over here. There's a question. Can we work without installing the software itself? And, and yeah, we're, we're not installing software at all. So if I was to go to your computer and just log in with my password, and it, it looks like um, you, you may be in the, in the uh, Asia region, um, it would actually not hit the West Coast server of the United States. It would hit a server in Singapore. But yeah, I could log in and do this exact demo. I could access all my data right from that server. So you never install any software with Onshape. So you can see we have a sketch here. There's some constraints we're missing. If we're missing some constraints, we can show those constraints. And you can see that I have a coincident at the top. And you can see I have tangency at the bottom. But I'd like to add another tangency. Well, that's easy to do. You just pick the two entities and hit the tangent icon. I could pick these two entities and hit the tangent icon. And you can see I'm adding the tangencies. So any constraint management that you do, you just pan over the constraint and it highlights the entities that are involved in that constraint. It's pretty nice. And we might want to add some parametric dimensions. So I'll go ahead and do that. We're going to add a dimension here. Uh, and I apologize. I'm in inches, but um, I think you'll get the idea. Uh, we're going to do two and a quarter inches. It will rescale the entire sketch. And I can zoom up and show that. I can add um, another measurement here. I can add equations if I want. So there I did 1 plus 0.125, and you can see that. I could add and mix units if I'd like. So here I'm going to do 3 quarter. And if I um, go back to that, you can see the 3 quarter. But I could add, do 3 quarter inches plus 1 millimeter and, and mix units, and Onshape will calculate that fine. Um, with this dimension, I'll also make this uh, 0.75, and this circle will be uh, 0.375. Notice the color changes. On this circle, it's changing from blue to black, and black means that it's fully constrained, similar to what you'd find in, the, say, a SolidWorks or a, um, a Solid Edge or an Inventor. When we extrude, you know, Onshape is, is really... Um, Smart, it finds the contour. I can pull this arrow up and down so you can see um, you can see that I'm getting that re real time feedback. I could key in 75 as well. And notice too that it's, it's a multi part environment. So if these parts weren't connected, if I deselect the inner part, I'm creating two parts at once, or I can, I can join them with that center. So it's pretty nice that you can um, you can choose between a multi-part environment or uh, or build a single part.
So um, I'm not sure I understand this question, but can I create a 3D solid with this and do I require a, a minimum computer configuration? So what you need is you need a, um, a computer that supports WebGL. Uh, that's important for you to know. So the browsers that support Onshape are Safari on the Mac, uh, Google Chrome, and Mozilla Firefox. So if you are if you can support those browsers, you should be able to run Onshape. We have a video online of somebody actually running Onshape on a Chromebook that's a $300 entry-level Chromebook, and it runs well. We have tried some things like running it on a Raspberry Pi, but it doesn't support WebGL to the level that we need it. So, you know, you can run it on an entry-level computer as long as you have an internet connection and, um, and WebGL support, full WebGL support. As far as the speed that's required, you know, we, we've seen people run it on um, 5 megabits a second, internet bandwidth, and you want to look at the latency of your bandwidth. So, so 80 milliseconds is probably the latency we'd recommend. But you could run, yeah, everything I'm showing you today, you could easily run on an iPhone or on, on a tablet like an iPad um, or an Android phone using a 4G network. It would run without a problem. And we've done that numerous times. So I have a, a part here. I'd like to, you can see that I'm building a sketch and extruding. And, and you can also notice if I go to the history that Onshape doesn't require you to save, it's remembering every step that I've done. So here I in, inserted a new part studio, I added the sketch and I extruded. And what we'll go ahead and do is we'll add one more feature. So I'm gonna sketch on the right plane, new sketch. We'll look normal to that. And I'm going to quickly sketch out a, um, a triangle. And we'll use this triangle to shape the geometry. So I'll add a constraint between the geometry and the edge. I'll add a dimension. Notice the flexibility of the dimension command. It will allow me to add you know, linear dimensions as well as um, you saw me do radius dimensions earlier or di diametric dimensions, but I can do angle dimensions as well. So that looks pretty good. And we'll go ahead and extrude this cross section using the same extrude command. We'll remove material this time. And in this case, we'll do a symmetric uh, removal and we'll just do a little cut. And you can see that sketch and that extrude in the, in the um, feature tree. Okay, so right now, many of you should be thinking, wow, okay, you're running traditional CAD application, but you're running it in the cloud with no install, it's really nice. But how is Onshape different? And that's one thing that I really want to show you. If I was going to share this document with, um, with a peer, you know, chances are if I was in using SOLIDWORKS or, or PTC, I might save off the file and then email it to the peer. With us, we don't need to create a copy. We just simply hit the share button. And the share button allows me so much more control with my data. So I can just type in somebody's um, email, and I'm typing in a peer of mine, Cody at onshape.com. And when I share with Cody, I have the ability to specify whether I'd like him to be able to edit this document, share with others. Maybe he can view, comment, copy, and export. Maybe he can just view and copy and export. Or maybe he's just a person that I want him to view. So. Depending on how I'd like the person to access, I can protect the data in many different ways, but I'm not creating a copy. So, you know, if I emailed him the, this document, it would be gone. I wouldn't know what he does with it. But here I can actually just hit share. And when I'm, I can change his permission at a later date, or I could just remove him from the share later and revoke his access. Sort of neat. You notice that I can share with groups of people, with teams and companies. I could share with the public, everyone that has Onshape. I could share, I could do a link and um, make a viewable link. And when I make a viewable link, let me open this up in, um, in an incognito window so you can see that. Even if the person doesn't have an Onshape account, when we type in that viewable link into any browser, they can actually see that 3D model and manipulate it right within the window. So it's a view only mode of Onshape. And you can see that as I, as I touch a dimension like this dimension, I am actually measurement is in the bottom right corner. So they can actually measure and view and manipulate. 
here's the swing arm we were creating this part studio. They can see all that data just by sharing the link. So it's really impressive. By the way, if you, if you share with somebody with editing abilities and they don't have an account, we'll create a free account for them automatically. So you should be able to collaborate with anybody. Let me go back and show you, um, show you one more thing. So it, I'm going to sort of simulate what it looks like when multiple people are accessing this document at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this tab. We'll move it over here so you can see it. So when somebody else accesses the same document that you're in, you'll see their initial up at the top. So you can see that I have a person. This is me. If you pan over, you'll see my name. But it's Darren on the left and Darren on the right. And watch what happens. So two people can work on the model at the same exact time. So if this person on the right actually adds a fillet, and we'll add a small fillet here, um, and I'll pick this edge. While this person's adding the fillet, the person on the left actually will see the fillet being created and who's creating it. And the second this person hits this checkbox, the model updates for everybody because it's using the same model. Likewise, this person over here could add a fillet. We'll add a fillet here. Maybe grow that fillet a little bit. And you can see the fillet being added. And before I even done adding this fillet, this person over here will add a chamfer. And you can see another feature is being created, a chamfer feature. Uh, we'll do a small chamfer. And when I accept, the person on the left will see the feature. When I accept here, the person on the right will see the chamfer. And you can see how multiple people can work on the same exact model at the same time. Now, we're showing you this um, using part design and adding features. But think about its potential in building assemblies. When multiple people can go into one assembly and one person can be adding the brackets, the other person could be adding the fastener, one person could be doing the electrical system while the other person does pneumatics. It's really a fast, fast way to work. And I want to show you how, how cool it is to have a cloud application. Um, if I show my phone, which I'm going to try to do right now, I'm going to try to project my phone to the screen. There it is. Onshape runs on phones, Android and iOS phones. So we'll run Onshape. And we'll go into that document. Now you'll see a third D up here in this area. This is running right on my phone. And we'll go to the, um, the part studio that we're working in. And you can see this part studio. And it's a full CAD system right on the phone. So watch this. Here, we'll go like this. And I'll, I'll move this upside down so you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shell this, uh, this part. And... We'll do a wall thickness of a little larger. We'll do a uh, 0.125 and accept that. And once I accept, you see that everybody has seen the shell. So think about the mobile tasks that you can do. You're at a customer site and you need to edit something. You can just pull open your phone and, and, uh, and edit. And everybody back at the office will know exactly what you're doing and see the changes you've made. Um, one last thing I'll do is I'll just change the part appearance. We can assign a material. Everybody asks that questions. Maybe we'll make the material steel. Uh, sorry, I, I missed it. Assign a material. It'll be uh, stainless steel. Let me search out a better 304 stainless steel. And um, we can rename the part. We'll call it swing arm. And we can change its color as well. And notice when I change its color, um, we'll make it sort of a yellowish that it will um, it'll update on everybody's uh, computer because it's, um, it's, it's pulling from the cloud. So I think you get the, get the feel from this. Again, you can download the Android app. It's free. 
uh, from Google Play or the iOS apps, which will run on iPad or um, iPhone from um, the iTunes App Store. Any questions on that? Okay, let me continue on. Um, when, oh, this is interesting. So not only can we work together, but it actually helps in design review as well. So you might notice that um, we have, um, as, as we're looking at different, different um, tabs, you can see what, where the person is. So right now I'm looking at the drawing on my iPhone and I'll go back to the part studio. But let's say I was in the field and I called you and I said, hey, we need to talk about this part. And you can say, sure. And you're able just to double click my initial and actually see exactly what's on my screen. So as I move it on my iPhone, the person in the remote location on their browser can look. So in this case, I might tell you, hey, we need to work on that that uh, fillet or that chamfer and you'll know exactly what I'm doing. We could also add comments. So let me click out and you can add comments as well. So maybe I'm talking about this hole here and I might say, um, I might say, you know, with a comment, sorry, I'll pick this one. I can highlight this and add a comment right to this face and I'll say, is this hole the right size? And um, if the other person actually will see the comment and um, when that comment is there, you can click on it and it will rotate the model exactly to that position and show you clearly what the other person was talking about. So it's a great tool as well for um, for collaborating and sharing models, but also reviewing models dynamically because everybody can see the same screen or you could do it asynchronous and add comments and they can see exactly what you're talking about. It's pretty neat stuff. Notice when I exit, we'll exit this one, one of the Ds goes away. And if I exited the iPhone, um, which I can do as well. Let me just show you how to do that. Just close the document. Um, the other D goes away as, as well. Okay, so someone's asking, you know, can we analyze the model? And I guess you're talking about simulation. It's a good time to talk about that. Um, I can hide that plane. Um, one thing it's important that you know is Onshape has an app store. So it's at app store dot onshape.com and the app store is where we have a number of partners that have written applications to work with onshape so let me just you can see we have over 30 partners you might recognize a lot of them so we have camworks and um and mastercam we have keyshot and and maxwell for rendering there's power surfacing which is a sub d and there's a number of simulation ones as well. We can look at by category. So for simulation, you know, there's Sim for Design and Simulation Hub. They work right within the Onshape window, and it's cloud-based simulation. There's SimLab Composer and SimSolid. They're desktop applications. SimSolid is actually a new meshless uh, uh, finite element system. And then there's SimScale, which is getting a lot of press right now. SimScale is um, is a cloud-based simulation. It does everything from you know nonlinear analysis to non-Newtonian fluids, really full full uh, breadth of simulation, and it's all cloud-based with no install as well. So there's a lot of different partners that you can use to do simulation, to do cam rendering, and also uh, to get content like supplier content. Trace Parts has over four hundred thousand, or sorry, four hundred million. Um, different components and that loads up right within inside the Onshape window. So yeah, if, you, if you're using Onshape, I encourage you to go get some applications for rendering. There's a number of them that, that run in the cloud. And it is a testament to how, um, how well people are reacting to Onshape. You know, for a, comp a company that's only had a product out of beta 
for less than four months, to have 30 companies write integrations is remarkable. A lot more are coming. And, um, and you'll also notice that, you know, a lot of people are following us into the cloud. So there's CAM in the cloud, there's simulation in the cloud, rendering in the cloud. So it's really exciting proposition. A lot of people will say, and, and if you've read some of our social ads, some people will say, I'll never put CAD in the cloud. Well, the industry's moving that direction. Everybody's moving that direction. It's something that uh, everybody sees as a huge benefit, not only the affordability, but the power. Okay, going back to this clamp, I wanted to highlight that, again, all the steps that I've done are, um, are, are being written up into the cloud. It's being recorded. And what's nice is I can undo. I can go back to any step, even if it was months ago. So I could actually go back before the fillets were added, and I could restore to the model at that point. And even the restore is considered a step. There's restore previous. So if I made a mistake, I could just restore before the restore. And there's the full model. And on top of that, just to, get, just to tell you how neat this is, you know, I can compare this model with one back in time. So we'll, we'll hit visually compare. And I can compare two states of a model. So it's easy for me to find, you know, if I make a mistake, it's easier for me to find where I went wrong. So here you can see a chamfer, a fillet, and a shell are different between the two that we're comparing. And you can see the difference here. The red indicates, you know, the geometry that's filled in. There's no shell, there's no chamfer, and there's no large fillet. Over here on the main one, the most recent, you see the shell, the fillet, and the chamfer. So not only are we, we hardly ever, ever crash, we're running redundant servers and, you know, on, on computers that are vastly superior to what an average engineer has on his desktop. We let you recover from any pilot error, any human error that you might have, because we let you restore back to any point in your design. And you can even compare points of your design, compare states. So, in, in, you know, in theory, I could go back years and, and return to a, a point in time. Let me come back to main here. And um, so I'm loading up the project. The other thing that I want to point out is, you know, the data is um, because the entire project is stored together, it really simplifies data management. So here I am in that state where you saw that in entire history. Well, if I'd like at this point, if I consider this a milestone in my design and I'd like to, to create a protected version, I can do that by just hitting this one button. We'll call it V1. And now you can see I have a dark circle representing V1. This is read only. If I go to V1, you'll see it's a view only version. So it's right protected. Everybody can get back to this. But I can continue working, and that's what main is. This is a workspace. And if I want to create a variation of V1, I could create a new branch and call this experiment one. So think about all the times you're using a traditional CAD and you want to try a variation, a different design. You might do a save as copy, save as copy, and then you have to manage the different copies. Well, with our, um, with our approach, you simply just create a different branch and everything's stored together. And you always know which is the latest one you've worked on, in this case, experiment one. What are the open workspaces, the, the work in progress? It's main and experiment one. What's the latest version? It's V1. And if you make changes to experiment one and changes to main, you could actually merge those changes together using our merge capability that we have as well. So you can see we have merge as well. You can have as many branches, as many versions as you'd like in our documents. So you don't have to invest in a PDM system. It's built in. The data management simplified because we're revving the entire project at a time. And you're not creating all the redundant copies with save as copy. Everything's stored together, all your design variations. That's an advanced topic. If you have any questions on that, you know, please type them in. Let me take a moment and show you assembly, because I think you're going to be impressed by how we handle assemblies. Assemblies are slightly different in Onshape. 
let me start by just showing you sort of the finished project. And I'll use this red uh, clamp when we build our assembly. But you can see that this assembly can rotate and slide together. Um, you can see it's got a part list. I can reorder these parts. Um, and it's got the different mates. So let's, let me show you how to build that. First thing you want to do is create an assembly tab. And you can see it here, assembly one. It doesn't have datum planes in assembly one. If you want to start, you want to hit insert. And actually, it's funny. It, usually you have thumbnail previews. Something must be slow in my system. But I'll go ahead and I'll, um, I'll add the hydraulic components. Okay, now I get the, the preview. I can add another O-ring. I'll add the, uh, the detailed swing arm. And just for giggles, I'll add the, um, the hex head cap screw as well. Okay, these three parts, this blue one, the shaft, and this O-ring were built together. But in the assembly, even if they were built together, um, you can still move them around. So I'm going to move the shaft out, and I'm going to move this, um, this O-ring out. We'll go ahead and fix this. Uh, this blue part. Now I fixed it in space so this blue part can't move. You can see a little grounded icon here. Okay, so in traditional CAD, you may, um, you may be used to this. If I was going to mate things together, like if I would like this guy to move inside this hole, I might do a concentric mate with traditional CAD. With Onshape, we do things a little different. We align points on different different parts. And how we do that is we pick our higher level mate. In this case, we might want a revolute mate, so it will rotate, a slider mate, so it slides up and down, or slide and rotate, that's a cylindrical. You'll notice we have a ball mate, a pin and slot mate, we have a planar mate, we have a tangent mate. What I wanted to do is slide and rotate, so I'm going to use the cylindrical mate. As I pan over different faces, you'll notice white spots appearing, different faces and edges. The white spots are all the common points that Onshape thinks you might use to create a mate. So if I pick a planar face, it's the center of the face, the midpoints of the edges, and the corners of the edges, the vertexes. If I picked a circle, it would be the center of the circle. And if I picked a cylinder, you might see this, it's the, it's the center of the cylinder, but we show the, the start, midpoint, and end of the cylinder. I'm going to pick this bottom point as the point that I'd like to mate with the bottom point of the shaft here. And it just aligns those two points. So it brought those two points together. And based off the mate type I have, it defines the motion that those two points could have off each other. So a cylindrical mate could slide and rotate along the z-axis. If I change that cylindrical to a ball mate, those two points will stay locked together, but it allows you know three degrees of rotation. If I picked Fasten, it would glue those points together. If I picked Revolute, it would just allow it to spin on the Z-axis, but keep those two points together. So you can see how easy this is once you get the hang of it. You're aligning two points and you're defining the motion between the two coordinate systems that you've chosen. So here we'll go back to that cylindrical mate. And what's also nice is the power of our um, command. So I can actually dictate its limits. I want it to move down 2.5 inches, but I want it to move up 0 inches. And now when I hit play, you can see that I've defined the full range of motion. It's free to rotate 360 degrees, but I've limited the stroke. Once it's defined as a mate, I can move it around with the mouse through its limits. OK. So that's a big sort of description of it, but watch how fast it goes. If I'd like to put this part on this cylinder with traditional CAD, I would align the concentrics, I would align the faces, and I might turn on reference planes and clock them. But with Onshape, I'm just picking, you know, I'm coming in here and I'm picking this edge here. Sorry, let me grab it. This edge right here, and I'm picking this top dead center and I'm fastening them together and they're done. Those are locked together and they rotate together.
We have the concept of um, smart mates as well. Uh, it, we call it snap mating where I could, um, you might see this little triad. This will allow you to rotate the part precisely if you like, but watch this. I can pick the snap mate mode and pick again, that center and the part turns transparent and I could just snap it right to that part, hit a to align the axis. And it's that fast. We can accept that. Uh, actually, let me let me do that again. Um, I'll hit undo and try it one more time. We're going to grab ahead just so you see that. It's sort of a fast snap, mate. So I'm grabbing this part. I'm snapping it to this axis, hitting A to flip it, releasing, and you can see that I've uh, made it in place. O-rings are really fast. In traditional CAD, you'd create a reference plane at the center of the O-ring grooves. You'd, you'd probably align three reference planes. With Onshape, you just have to, oh, sorry, hit the wrong button. You just have to hit fasten and pick the two, uh, two parts. Fasten and pick the two parts. And it moves those O-rings and, and glues them in place. So we now have a working assembly with only five mates. And, you know, traditionally, this would be about 12 mates. So it's pretty fast. Does anybody have any questions on that? I, I'm not seeing a lot of questions being typed in. No questions? Okay. I think you should be amazed. You know, I, I, I'm amazed that it's, it's – um, it has this power with zero install, zero software install. And everything I showed you, again, can be run on a phone or a tablet. So let's do one other thing that I think is impressive as well. And that's, um, that's how do I add an assembly to a sub-assembly? So what we'll do is we'll go back to this, um, this fixture. And you'll notice that I can actually insert components from another document. This is something new we added. Remember I said that every three, three weeks we, um, we increase the, um, the functionality. So this is something we recently added. But I can go to the assembly and actually add this work holding clamp. And again, check this out. The, um, that fasten mate allows me to quickly add this edge to this hole. And if I hit solve, the whole thing moves together. So we have a working clamp in our fixture. But this is where Onshape really has some nice intelligence because I can use replicate and I can replicate that hydraulic work holding clamp to all the different ports within my assembly. So I've populated the entire fixture with my work holding clamps. And you can see, you know, they all move independently. In fact, I can just rotate this guy around if I want. And, um, and you can see how they just move into place. Now, there's not a lot of clamp engagement here. So imagine that instead of building both these projects together, um, I'm buying the clamp from somebody else. And they shared that document with me. And I write, call them and say, hey, I don't, I don't get a lot of engagement here. Well, what they can do is they can go back to the original clamp document. We'll go to the swing arm. I'm going to edit it. We'll edit this sketch. And we'll make this sketch a bit longer, 2.5 inch. And the assembly updates accordingly. In fact, let's do one other thing. Let's go to the swing arm and we'll change its color so you can see this, this change. We'll make it sort of a, a bluish. Okay. And, um, and now we'll go to our, our version and we'll call this a new version. V2, and we'll say 2.5 inch swing arm. And back at the bevel gear, because it's a linked document, you can see 
that newer versions exist. And here I'll zoom in so you can see how I can update the, um, the work holding clamp. So just by highlighting all these work holding clamps, with a right mouse click, I can update the link document to the latest clamp and it updates with the blue swing arm. So imagine that, um, you know, you're sharing, maybe you're a manufacturer of components, like you make casters and you've, you've shared a document with, um, with a customer and then you make a change to your caster. All your customers could automatically update and get an update. Imagine if you're using, you're buying a supplier, maybe a gearbox and then the gearbox changes you can get notified right within the CAD system of those changes. It's that powerful because it's version control working with um, link documents, working with share. And it's something that because there's no copies, it's a very elegant workflow. Okay, so someone's asking, could you use another friend or colleague's design by sharing and inserting it? And, and absolutely. Um, Balaji, that's exactly what, um, what I was trying to show, you know, as long as you have access to it, if he gave you permission to utilize it, you can stick it within the assembly. So someone's asking about on shape file formats and, and, and that's an interesting, uh, topic. So let's, let's talk about this. This is an assembly here. And just by right mouse clicking on this assembly tab, you can see that I can export a whole bunch of different file formats. I can write out a Parasolid, an Asus, a Step, or an STL for 3D printing. And, you know, just for Parasolid, I can write out multiple versions of Parasolid. That's an assembly. If it was a part, these are parts, I could export a lot more formats. I can export Parasolid, Asus, Step, IGES, SolidWorks, Rhino, and STL. And... What's also nice is we read in even more formats. So let me go to help and show you the latest list of the formats we read. So if I go to imported, exported, supported file formats, you can see that we can read Parasolid Aces, Step, IGES, but we can also read Katia V4, V5, and even V6 parts, SolidWorks, Inventor, Pro Engineer, JT, Rhino, and Collada. For assemblies, we can read all of the neutral file formats plus SOLIDWORKS, Pack and Go. And for drawings, of course, we can read the AutoCAD, DXF, DWG. We also export a PDF file for, um, for drawings as well. So, um, Gaddy, you asked, can I export, can I save my part as STL? Absolutely. So, STL for uh, parts as well as assemblies can be written out and just right mouse click on the part or the tab and you'll be able to export. All right. So can we get a design from online and use it? Yeah. So, so certainly if, if you want to uh, export something as a parasolid, let's say I just want to grab the, um, we'll, do, we'll grab this uh, upper casting I can export that as, say, a Parasolid file or, or ACES Step, I just saw works, Rhino, STL. We'll do Parasolid. And I'll go ahead and, and hit OK. And it's going to prepare that for me. And then it will download it local to my system. And you'll see, there it goes. It's, it's downloaded local to my machine. All right. Well, we're coming up uh, on, we have about five minutes left and we covered a lot. So let me run back to the PowerPoint presentation that I have, um, or I should say the Google Slides because we do everything in Google Slides and give you some next steps. So, you know, hang on, there we go. Um, listen, I hope you agree. So Onshape's free. You can sign up today. Go to Onshape.com if you haven't created an account. And you can sign up and have your free account where you can learn and explore. You can import and export geometry so you can get a feel for how it will perform with your, 
your information. We, we believe, you know, with the collaboration and the version control, how you can do multiple iterations, branch, combine. Um, there's a lot of direct editing tools and surfacing tools I haven't even showed you. But we believe that the, the benefits are there. Um, you're going to see a value. So we'd love for you to start a new project in Onshape. You know, try to, uh, try to build an assembly, build your parts, build an assembly. If you can't come up with a new project right away, use Onshape to collaborate with your existing CAD data. There's no reason why you can't upload your data into Onshape and then see it, even if it's a SOLIDWORKS or PTC file, see it in, on your phone and tablet and collaborate in the ways that I showed you. The, there's Bulletproof CAD Data Exchange. So if I upload, let, let me show you this. If I upload a Parasolid file, we'll go back to Onshape. I'm going to create a brand new document. So this is an empty document. It has an empty part studio, empty assembly. And I'm going to go ahead and import a um, CAD file. And what I'll import is a, um, this is interesting, I'll import a SolidWorks pack and go assembly. So it's putting up a NEMA motor and you can see what it does. When it imports a SOLIDWORKS data, it gives you a tab with the zip file that contains the SOLIDWORKS data, which you could download yourself. It translates it so you can actually see the data within the Onshape interface. And now you can see it on your phone and on your tablet, any computer. But this is really what's neat, is this original SOLIDWORKS data could be downloaded or it could actually be translated. So if you shared SOLIDWORKS data with somebody and they say, hey, I have an older version of SOLIDWORKS, can you send me a Parasolid file? You can actually say, look, just use Onshape and you can translate it to whatever format you need. In fact, you could write it out to an older version of SOLIDWORKS if you want. So it's really a, a nice way to just share data. And, uh, you know, I encourage you to do that. Um, okay. And then the last thing is the, the demo that I showed you with the tooling fixture, you could easily import the casting and build the fixture in Onshape. So, you know, look at your peripheral equipment, your toolings, your fixtures, your test equipment. All of that stuff are great projects to do right in Onshape. All right, so um, I'm still looking at questions. There's a couple more questions. Someone's asking, you know, can you create a helix in Onshape? And absolutely you can. So let me show you that. Um, we have a helix command. It's very easy to use. You simply um, draw a circle and, and, uh, and, and ex tell it the pitch, number of revolutions, and it will create it for you. Someone's asking, what about standard holes? So if you pick any face, we have a standard hole command where you can do your ISO tapped, you can do blind, through all, um, tapped or clearance holes. They're all there, a nice little library for you to build in. Um, what about measuring? So yeah, I, I, this isn't always obvious for, for new users, but Measure is always turned on. So if I click any edge in the bottom right, you'll see the measurement command. And we can look like if I click two faces, let's pick uh, this hole and this hole. You'll see that I'll get the parallel distance, the area, the min distance. Also, if I pick the entire part, you'll see a little icon that represents scales and that will have all the mass properties, the volume, the surface area, the center of mass. Okay, and there's one more question someone's asking. Um, can we see a recording of this presentation? Yeah, we're going to um, bundle up this recording and we'll send it out to everybody who registered for this webinar. Okay, one last slide for you, and that's um, my contact information. So I, I do appreciate um, you spending time with me today. My name's Darren Henry, and this is my email, dhenry at Onshape. You, you're, you're free to email me with any questions. 
You also can um, look me up on LinkedIn if you'd like to connect with me. Um, the, the other place that I'd recommend you go is the Onshape Forum, which you'll find is very active with users. And um, you can get there through our website. Just go to Community Forums. And it's a great resource for you to post any question, learn what's new in each release, and get the help you need to be successful with Onshape. Um, there's also plenty of videos online as well. So I'm not seeing any more questions. I'll stay online for a little bit, but I do appreciate your time today. And I, uh, I wish you success with Onshape. Thank you.